Hey friends, we're learning C-sharp. We are deep in collections right now, having just learned about list of T. One of the things that I was excited about was noting here in my code that we created a new list of strings. We initialized it with the first three friends right there, and then we added three more, and David made the comment that I didn't have to worry about memory. I just, I can add lists as much as I want. I don't have to think about that. Additionally, we went and we did a for each over these names. But I want to point out also that we could say console.writeLine. We could say names. And let's say names at two. Names at two. The, the second or the tooth? <laughs> right? The tooth, yes. <laughs> is, it, is it the tooth? Because let's do this. Let's just not do uh, names at two. Let's do names at zero. Because we have six items here. And we'll see which names pop out at the zero and the two spots. So let's go and do that. Scott and Felipe. So let's go back and we note that Scott is the first. Felipe is the third. Yeah. David. I know. That's confusing. It's, it's funny. It's confusing when you first learn to code, but programmers love to start at zero. One is not the first, the zeroth is always the first. Okay. So that applies to lists, and we'll learn about arrays soon. Mm -hmm. Whenever you're going to index into one of these collections in C-sharp, you want to use zero to get the first element. And the last one is mm -hmm. the length of the array minus, or length of the list minus one. That's a great point. And why? Because reasons. Because reasons. <laughs> All right. So let's, uh, we're going to comment out our for our loop, loop here. And I'm going to do this with a little trick. This is called a chord. I'm going to say Control K, and then I'm going to press C. All right? Oops. Does that not work in VS Code? It does, but it's a different shortcut key. Oh, it's probably. a different shortcut. Oh, there it, it is. Okay, good. Yeah. So Control K. Oh, Control K, Control C. So what I did there is I selected a bunch of code, and I said Control K, Control C. And what it's doing is it's commenting that out temporarily, because I just want it to pop up these two things at the bottom. I'm going to clear my screen and run it again, just because I want to be real clear. We have Scott and Felipe. Okay? So there's six items. Yep. Six items. So we'll do a copy-paste, and I'm going to go and output the sixth uh, item in our list of names. All right? I'll go back, say .NET run. Boom. Index was out of range. Now, you told me it's important to read these things, but I'm just going to panic and not read it at all. Right? <laughs> But it's telling me exactly what's going on. It says out of range. Yep. Now you told me if I wanted to get the last one, it's actually, I could say five, yep. or I could say names.count minus one. Because if there's six of them, yep. then it'll get the fifth one, which is the last one. Right, zero because we start five. at zero. Okay. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of two. We're going to have the first one or the zero with. Yep. And then we're going to have the last one, which is count minus one. There we go. Scott and Maria. Yeah. And then we but, note this little helper friend here. Yeah. What is this? It's like, hey, you're in C Sharp 12 now. We can do this in a much more succinct way. And it is the dev kit that's giving us this functionality inside yep. of Visual Studio Code. So I want to say quick fix. And it says that I could fix uh, this thing called the index operator. I could use the index operator for the entire document. Ooh. Now that's really interesting. We got this little syntax. hat there. So Beautiful. what does that mean? What's that going on That means there? count from the back of the array. <sighs> okay, hang so, on a second. Yeah. That's the first one. Yep. Th but this is the second. Mm -hmm. That's one from the back? One from the back. But that's not zero-based. That's base. the back. <laughs> but it's not zero-based, though. This is true. Okay. So if I want the second from the last, yep. which would be Damien, we go hat two. two. Scandalous. It's great. Is that great? Now, why is that great? Why would a programmer who's been doing this for a long time think, hey, that's great? So some of these syntaxes came from other languages. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of say, Python in this, like, an easy to kind of index into an arrays kind mm -hmm. of syntax. Um, if you are passing around, when you want to reference the back of an array, you normally have to reference the array itself inside the indexer. In this case, you don't have to actually know what the actual thing you're, you're, you're doing, you can just pass in hat one, hat two, and it will figure out where 
it currently is, mm -hmm. and we'll go and we'll go from the back of that index. So it it kind of self references the thing being in indexed into, if that makes okay. sense. So if I go back here and I select this and I go Control K, Control U, which does an uncomment, can I say from my my list of names, give me like the second to the fourth? Yeah. Can I go like give me those? Yeah. Is that allowed? Yeah, you can get ranges. That's crazy. One really good thing about having the syntax is imagine you had two arrays, right? And they were the same length. Imagine you, you made a mistake somewhere coding and you pass in the wrong index into the wrong array and you were out of range. Mm -hmm. With this syntax, you're kind of scoping the indexing to the array itself. You're saying, go to the back of this array. So you don't have to kind of use the right variable and the right count. This just says, start from the back of where you are and count inwards. Okay. Right? So it says for each name in names, just give me number two through four, two, three, four. My real friends. But notice that it says, <laughs> I, saw, I thought it was going to say two through four. Yep. But I got only two names. Yeah. That, uh, that, that deals with an issue called inclusive versus exclusive. So the first one is including, including number two. Including that number. Up to and not including number four. That's right. Which is, in this case here, zero, right? Yep. One, and then Felipe is two, David is three, and Damien is number four, and he's not included, I'm afraid. He can't come to the party. Oops. Bummer. <laughs> okay. Now, I want to call you out on something, though. Yep. We're talking about lists of strings. Yeah. And you keep saying arrays. Yeah, like, oops. Why is that interesting? Because I think arrays are a thing that we hear about when we learn about programming. Let's make an array real quick here of strings and explain why even you are saying array so often. Yeah. Arrays are kind of the, the, the universal primitive type for storing lists of things. So if I have a bunch of, remember before we put a string in a bucket or yeah. a number in a bucket, if I have a row of buckets with one thing per bucket, yep. it's an array. It's an array. Of yep. buckets. So how do I make a string array? We can, do you want to use the same names or array? Well, or yeah, let's try that. Yeah, let's let's, do let's that. change the list to an array. So we're going to say not a list of string. Right. What am I going to say? New string square bracket. Okay. That's it. That's it. Okay. So now I've got this, and we'll go ahead and do the exact same thing. So the code is not changing for each name and names. Correct. Name.upper. I'm going to expect to get three names, and they're all going to work. Yeah. Okay. So for each understands how to for each over arrays, lists, any right. kind of collection in the entire right. C sharp universe. Exactly. It's right. enumerating them. In enumerating, you can Correct. hear the word number in there. And if you enumerate something, you go, dun, 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 dun. there you go. That's right. That many. Okay, so then I'm going to go and do the obvious next thing, which is names dot add, because I was doing Ooh. that before in list world. You were. And uh, I'm going to add in other friends. And I'm seeing that that's giving me a squiggly already. Right. Um, I could try to build it or run it. And I'm going to see, well, hang on a second. String array doesn't have a, an add. Well, that's not cool. That's right. You can't, you can't change the size of the array once you've made it. So arrays are fixed in length. Um, right now, you declared an array of three slots. And you fill those slots with Scott, Anna, and Felipe. And you can't add a fourth one. You can make a new array of four slots, copy those values from the, from the old version to the new version. Okay. But you're, you're essentially having to manually create new space to add new things. OK, so I right. can't just add a bucket to the end. I'd have yeah. to make an entirely new row of buckets, pour all of my stuff. It's a whole Correct. thing. You got it. It's a whole thing. Although, in C Sharp 12, it's much simpler to do it. OK. Do you want to see? Sure, real quick. All right, so names equals. Names, which is an array of strings. Yeah, equals. Open square bracket. OK. Dot, dot. Dot, dot. Three dots? Two dots, three dots. Two, three, uh, two. We'll find out in a yeah. second. Names. Names. And then add a comma. Oh, like this? And add Damien. Yep. OK. That's it? And yep. That's it. Syntax. And then, yep. OK. So this is how I did it with list of t. I'm going to comment that out, because that's not working, because we're not doing a list of t. So you're going to say, make a new array and right. add Damien to it. That's right. OK, let's see if that works. It's more than that, actually. It's, ma it's make a new array. Copy all the previous entries from the from my previous names array, 
and append them to that list, mm -hmm. and then store that result array in the in the new in the names array. So that sounds like a lot of work. Yeah, and it probably used a lot of memory, and it was kind of a hassle. It's convenient if I'm a person that uses arrays of stuff. Yep. But when do I pick an array of strings, and when do I pick an array of lists? And I can have arrays of all kinds of things, integers and longs and other yeah. types. I would default to list for for most computations. Um, because you can change it, you can add to it, rem remove from it. Arrays are typically used when you want to fix memory, mm -hmm. um, or when you're trying to do things that are a bit more efficient in some cases. But I would say you could default to list for most of your operations. Okay, so for the beginner stuff that we're doing, it's interesting, but it's not a, a deal breaker. Stick yeah, with lists. That's right. And then this new feature here, it's beautiful. Is is very nice. You like yeah. that, uh, and that's making what used to be several lines of mess a nice lot of and, lines, <laughs> nice, and, nice and clean. But what's cool about it, what I got out of this, is that whether it's an array or a list, I can still for each over it really neatly. That's right. Very cool. All right, I am learning all about the difference between list of T and arrays and all the things in between, as well as combining all the things we've learned so far as we continue on our journey to learn C-sharp.